Oh, good morning. Day 175 of our daily broadcast from Shaw Hope Church for friends and family and those who join with us each day. Good to see you this morning. Pray that God bless you today. Uh, here we are, middle of the week. Um, of um, our, Halfway through the last week of our broadcast um, during this corona crisis. But there we go. Um, looking to God for his provision and his help in uh, the time of, of, uh, of great need. Um, reading some of the stories of, of what's happening around the world and the nations that are in uproar, the nations that are, uh, are struggling to cope with this crisis. Reports came out that I read today um, of um, North Korea um, in collapse. And of course, there's, there's no official news, but um, it seemed the Christian brothers escaped from North Korea and uh, and this telling of, of um, famine and uh, lack of food and, and escalation in prices and uh, it's getting really really serious um so you know we've got a lot to be thankful for at this time haven't we um so if we're, if we're feeling a little bit down in the dumps today just be just be grateful for uh, all that we we do have and, and what god has given us and uh, and the the fact we live in a in a country where you know the support has been there for so many people uh, during this really difficult time. So we're looking at Psalm forty six as we <laughs> the the ultimate. I called it yesterday uh, the ultimate uh, watering hole, um, and uh, some of the background about uh, Martin Luther's writing of that great hymn. And how he, he he saw this this psalm as a, as a watering hole for him back in the 1500s. So um, yesterday um, I didn't give you the title for the for those verses, but it could be our immovable refuge. And today we've got our inexhaustible river. Um, so um, yesterday that refuge that God is our refuge and strength. Uh, he is strong. He is stable. He is secure. Uh, an impenetrable fortress, the walled city of protection that that uh, comes and, and and builds us up and supports us and strengthens us, even when trouble comes, even when trouble has been at our doorstep for the last six months, feeling under pressure in a in a tight spot in a place where we're cramped and unable to move or escape, so we can say because. Our God is uh, an immediate help. He is uh, instantly available. All we have to do is ask. And believe me, there are folks who are wanting to ask you why it is you have the hope you do and what it is that they need to do to have the hope you have. And they want to know, would you be willing to pray for them? Um, because they have a need. They have a, a situation that is getting too much. The pressure's built up. They feel they're feeling um, cramped, they feel as if it, it's it's getting claustrophobic um, and yet they would love to have what you have and what I have and that is that immediate access to the God who is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in the time of trouble. So we will not fear. Come on, say with me today, so I will not fear. Did you say so? I will not fear. Even though the mountains quake, even though they disappear into the sea, and even that then causes the tsunami that, that swamps the land, what seemed immovable has moved, what seemed bound has broken its boundaries. Um, even in all of that, yes, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in the time of trouble. So today we're going to read verses 4 um, through 7. Okay, so Psalm 46, verses 4 through 7. There is a river uh, whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts, the Lord Almighty is with us, the God of Jacob is our 
fortress. Um, now, it's very interesting um, to realise that, of course, Jerusalem doesn't have a river. <laughs> so, what's that about then? So, there's no river, but there is a stream. Um, and what uh, the, the, the psalmist is saying here, the God, God is the river. He himself is the river that satisfies. And it's not like the turbulent seas that are in uproar, that are, are, are raging and, and foaming and roaring and, and bringing desolation to the land. Um, God is the river whose, notice the word, streams mm, make glad the city of our God. Now, uh, with, a, with a stream, you have a constant flow. Um, <coughs> And the stream of Siloam was the only water supply uh, that Jerusalem had as a city. And so the people in Jerusalem were depending on this constant flow, the stream. One thing you can say about our God, who is our fortress and our strength, is his consistency. Um, you know, he's there when, when, when we cry out. As we've seen many times, as David cried out, I cried to the Lord and he heard me and answered my cry and answered me from heaven. He, he, God's justice is, is a sign of that consistency. <laughs> um, <laughs> going back to the driving instructor illustrations again, I haven't done that for a while, have I? But one of the, one of the things that used to drive me, drive me mad, um, and and my pupils um, was when there would be inconsistent um, results. So, for example, one one girl springs to mind immediately. It doesn't always have to be a girl, by the way. It could have been a lad, and it could have thought of a lad as well. But for both of them, the one thing that drove drove them mad, um, even though they couldn't drive, <laughs> they haven't passed the test at that point. Um, was the fact that they had taken the test um, uh, and driven really, really well and made some mistake that the examiner deemed to be worthy of a fail. And they were desperately disappointed. These two individuals that are in my mind straight away, as soon as I said consistency uh, in judgment. And, and so that they were, oh, just... And so was I, really annoyed, because... Um, I could sense that what was being said um, as as um, happened um, mm, we, we, they had been embellished somewhat. That that they, they didn't seem to be mm, it didn't seem to ring true, and I knew that these pupils obviously that I'd worked with them for whatever it was three, four, five, six months, uh, and that the mistake seemed out of character, etc., etc. Now. But they got, okay, well, they failed, never mind. Never mind, you'll do it next time. You'll do it next time. So next time they go, and to quote the young girl, because that's the one that sprung to mind immediately, when she came back, uh, elated, because, yes, I've passed. I've done it. Wonderful. And, and, and then her face changed. And, and I'm seeing this... Uh, very happy uh, individual who was skipping around the car park suddenly become very sullen and and sad and and and, and actually quite annoyed. Uh, and I said, well, "So, uh, sorry, you passed. It's good news. Uh, yes. So why why are you looking so annoyed?" She said, "Because I've just driven like an elephant." <laughs> Quote: "I've just driven like an elephant." Uh, really? Was that how? <laughs> How do elephants drive? Good question. <laughs> With great difficulty. But <laughs> at the point was, she was making, was she made really, in her mind, serious mistakes that that um, made no sense whatsoever. That if she'd have driven like that in the first test, she she knew she would have failed. It, it, just, it, just, it, was, a, it was a disaster zone. And yet, on this occasion, he passes her, and it's the same instructor, well, same examiner, by the way, um, Mr. Inconsistent, as he, was, as he was known in the trade. So, 
I, 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 I'm struggling now to justify or try to defend Mr. Inconsistent. I can't. Because she knows herself that the, the silly little mistake that he blew out of all proportion on the first test was nothing compared to the mess she made the second time, and now he's passed it. What's that about? Inconsistency. But our God is like the streams of Salome. Constant. Consistent. Consistent in his fairness. Consistent in his justice. Consistent in his uh, being available at a moment, as you as you cry out to him, he's always there. He's consistent. So the streams of Salome was the only water supply that the residents of Jerusalem could depend on, um, with it not having a river. But seeing God's protection from an enemy that had attacked it, he, the psalmist says, God is within her. She will not fall. Confidence in God. When you're under attack, if you're under attack today, have that confidence in God that he will protect you. He will see you through. Even at break of day, it says, even at the daybreak, when the city was at its most vulnerable from attack, uh, maybe you're feeling vulnerable today. Maybe you're feeling as if it's all just getting too much. Look, you have put your confidence in God. Go back to, the, go back to this watering hole and get your confidence back in God. Not in yourself, not in what you're going to do, not in what you've achieved or in the past or how things have worked out, what you think your plan of attack is going to be, but your confidence in the consistency of a stream that makes glad the city of God, makes glad God's people, the consistent God who's always flowing with his abundant supply for whatever you need, whatever you're in need of, he says, I am. Yes, uh, different kings had come and attacked uh, Jerusalem. Um, there's, there's several examples throughout, throughout the Old Testament, and 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 they would raise their uh, their 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 voice of of um, of insults. Um, that Sennacherib he, he come with his horrendous uh, reputation, and 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 shout insults and and put, quote the fear of his God, the little g, into the people. <clears throat> and um, it, it, it was, it was, that was their, 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 their ploy, uh, that the city would just surrender and give up. Um, and they had some pretty gruesome uh, things to do uh, to, the, to the inhabitants, um, should, should, the, should they really give in. Um, it was horrendous. Their reputation was horrific. Um, but when such attacks come on, on God's people and the insults are, are just flashing and bashing and it just seemed to be uh, like a like a thunderstorm that you, you, you just oh, fear of God is on folks. They don't know which way to turn, which way to go. All we need to know is that God raises his voice and the earth melts like candle wax in the heat. It, it, it's all over. All he has to do is raise his voice and the earth melts. And the, the psalm says, the Lord Almighty is with us. The Lord Almighty, uh, literally the God of hosts, um, the God of heaven's armies is with us. Um, he sends his angels um, to work on behalf of those who are heirs of, of salvation. Hebrews chapter 1. You know, the God of heaven's armies <clears throat> is always by my side. We could sing again, couldn't we? Yeah. Um, won't be long. <laughs> um, the, heaven, the God of heaven's armies who is always ready to protect, always ready to send angels on assignment. To, to bring us to a place of, of safety and security and, and knowing again a time of peace in God. And the God of Jacob, the God of Israel, was himself, and that's the issue, a high and safe place. The God of Israel, the God of Jacob, that's what he's saying, the God of Israel is himself a place of safety and security. Run to him, Selah.
think of that. I'm just going to read it, um, <clears throat> those same verses in the NLT. And uh, I forgot where I was then, 46, here we go. Um, a river brings joy to the city of our God, the sacred home of the Most High. God dwells in that city. It cannot be destroyed. From the very break of day, God will protect it. The nations are in chaos, then the kingdoms crumble. God's voice thunders and the earth melts. <laughs> yes, the Lord of heaven's army is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress himself. He himself. Okay. If you're feeling vulnerable today, <clears throat> come on. Go to the watering hole, Psalm 46. Find your strength and your safety and security in the God of Israel, the God of Jacob, the God of heaven's armies, who's sending angels on assignment today to you, to minister to you and me who are heirs of salvation. Um, Hebrews chapter 1, and just see if I can quickly find it as we finish it this morning. <clears throat> yeah, verse 14, Hebrews chapter 1. Therefore angels are only servants, spirits sent to care for people who will inherit salvation. Caring for you today. Wow. Lord, I pray. Oh, Lord, I pray. Send angels on assignment to those who are feeling vulnerable and under pressure today hemmed in on every side unable to move unable to even wriggle their toes it would seem just cramped in by the uh, uh, this opposing threat that seems to be even to the taking of their very life oh lord i pray for that protection that refuge that they can find in you today the god who is always available instantly available as we cry to you you are faithful you are consistent you are strong, you are mighty, you are stable in all your ways, you are righteous in all your ways, your right way of doing things is the best way, and we trust you, and we look to you today, help us all that we might know what it is to know that the God of heaven's armies is always on our side, in Jesus' name, amen. Have a great day, be blessed, be encouraged, be strengthened, and I'll see you again tomorrow, bye-bye.